There uh, are a lot of situations where you may have derogatory information on your credit report and you know, you've had it on your credit report over seven years. However, you know, it has yet to fall off your credit report and you're wondering what's going on, okay? So I own a credit repair company called Witness Riches. Um, our service is called The 700 Club. Um, and basically we provide a uh, legitimate credit repair service where we leverage federal credit repair laws, okay? And one particular law that I'm gonna mention is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And under this particular law, your credit report must meet three criteria. It must be 100% accurate, 100% verifiable, and 100% timely, okay? Uh, what I'm gonna talk about right now is the 100% timely uh, criteria that your credit report must meet, okay? So um, I, I wanna make sure I don't miss any information, okay? So I wanna slow down. So there are particular situations where your debt has an expiration date, okay? Whatever state that you live in, there's something called a statute of limitations. Peace out, boss. Um, there's something called a statute of limitations, and basically, it's an expiration day, date for the debts that you have, okay? And after a particular amount of time of no more activity, um, you will basically not have to pay, legally, uh, pay uh, the, the debt, okay? So let's say, for example, in California, um, the statute of limitations is four years, okay? So basically, uh from the point where you stop paying on the account, okay, let's say it's 2000, let me write this out for you. Let's say it's 2015, okay? So you stop paying the, on the account in 2015, all right? In the state of California, you have four years uh, where the, credit, the creditor can actually come after you and sue you, okay? So basically you have until 2019 all right you have four years within that four-year gap you're still legally uh, responsible for that debt however once you hit that that threshold 2019 um, that debt has expired and you're no longer legally responsible for that debt okay so that's one big thing that a lot of people need to pay attention to when they're looking to pay on accounts uh, that are on the credit report check out your statute of limitations okay uh, each state has a different statute of limitation. Check out your your state statute of limitation. Uh, I'm just using California right now in this example. But basically, um, you know, you have a particular amount of time where you can be sued. But after that, peace out, boss. After that, you're no longer legally responsible for paying that debt. So if they take you to court and say, hey, um, you, you owe us $10,000. Because of your state statute of limitations, that debt has expired and you can ask the judge to drop the case, okay? Of course, definitely, you know, seek legal counsel uh, because I am not a lawyer, but I know a few things, all right? So that's your state statute of limitations. However, on your credit report, uh, there's a different statute of limitation, and it is um, a statute of limitation for reporting derogatory information on your credit report. And that is, it ranges seven years to 10 years, but let's go with the uh, normal seven years. Uh, typically, majority of the accounts on your credit report meet the seven-year criteria. However, what a lot of people believe is, you know, Jason, I had this account since 2000, uh, 2001. You know, it's 2018 right now. I had this account for 17 years. Why is it still in my credit report? Well, the reason it's still in your credit report is because what they look at is the, the date of last activity, Okay. Um, the statute of limitations for your credit report begins on the date of last activity, not when you originally opened up the account, okay? So, for example, let's say that you have a credit card, you want to call it CC, and you opened it in the year 2000, okay? And right now, so we got 2000, and, you know, you stop paying that account, in 2015 all right so basically that account has been on your credit report for 15 years 15 years why is that still in your credit report well the reason it's still in your credit report is due to the fact that information on your credit report is removed automatically after seven years and 180 days from the last date of activity okay so the seven years doesn't 
it doesn't activate within that time frame. It actually activates at this point when you stop paying on the account. So let's say that you stop paying on the account in 2015. Now what we need to do is calculate seven years and 180 days from that point. And that's 2022 and 180 days. Okay, that's the real date where that account will fall off your credit report, okay? Seven years and 180 days from date of last activity. And a lot of people, you know, they have accounts that have been on their credit report for years, but it's still reporting because the date of last activity is recent, okay? So if you're looking for information to get removed off your credit report, what you need to understand is they begin to calculate the seven years from the date of last activity. Seven years and 180 days from that point, okay? So I'm going to give you another example to you know make this more understandable. Let's say that you had an account in 2010, right? And, uh, you know, you stopped paying on it in 2010. Seven years and 180 days from that point is, of course, 2017. So if you have an account that you stopped paying on, it was actually closed. I know that does not look like closed. Closed. I'm sorry, this is chicken scratch. If it was closed in 2010, that's the date of last activity. That's the last date that you paid on the account, okay? That means seven years and 180 days later, 2017, and like 2017 June time, um, that account should be removed off your credit report, okay? However, if that account is still reporting on your credit report, that means it is now in violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act because it is not, no longer 100% timely. That's untimely information that's irrelevant and it should have been removed automatically. So if you find yourself in a situation where you know the account is has um, you know more than uh, seven years and 180 days of uh, no activity and it's still reporting on your credit report, you have a case. You can dispute that with the credit bureaus and let them know this is in violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act because it's past seven years and 180 days of uh, last activity and should be removed from my credit report. That's your case, okay? However, if that's not your situation, then we need to be a little patient and allow time to help you. But what you can do is if you you know definitely want to you know get that removed, of course you need to work on a credit uh, dispute strategy uh, and build a case against the, the creditor who is you know continuing to report that information and get it removed. You can do this yourself or you can work with a credit repair company. Whatever you want to do, that's up to you. But that's the information, okay? This is what I find a lot of people uh, doing that actually puts them in a worse position. Let's say that you have had this situation. You had an account um, that was closed in uh, 2010. However, it didn't fall off your account automatically in 2017. What people do is, because they want to get that removed, they begin to try to uh, settle on that account and paying on that account, okay? So they will basically contact the original creditor. Let's say it's with Capital One. Um, hey, Capital One, um, I, you know, this account was charged off in 2010. You know, I'm in a better position in my life and I just want to pay this account. Can I do that? Because I, I need to improve my credit. Capital One, you know, they don't care what your situation is. They just want the money. So they accept whatever arrangement that you make. And what happens is the account was charged off in 2010 and then what happens is you pay it afterwards you know way down the line and then it's changed to a paid charge off and guess what happens instead of seeing your your credit score increase your credit score drops because this old derogatory account is now a more current derogatory account and what credit bureaus do is uh, they basically grade you off a of recent activity, okay? Uh, and when I say recent activity, I mean activity that has occurred in the last 36 months. If the activity is older than 36 months, meaning that the derogatory information is older than 36 months, it, it really doesn't have such a huge impact on your credit score anymore. And it's really something that you shouldn't be too worried about because it's not really impacting your credit score too much. 
And due to the fact that you have brought this old derogatory account that's older than 36 months, older than three years, because you have brought that to a more current standing, what happens is you re-age this account to a more recent derogatory. So instead of this account being seven years of age, you have now re-aged this account to make it a more recent derogatory. It's no longer, uh, the date of last activity is no longer seven years. The date of last activity is the day where you pay that account, okay? And you end up shooting yourself in the foot because you didn't negotiate the right strategy, all right? Um, and I will be very careful on that because your credit score can end up dropping, you know, 50 to 100 points because of this stupid mistake, all right? And a lot of times people make this mistake because they don't have the right information and they were unaware that this could actually hurt them. And when it comes to building and repairing your credit, it's all about strategy, okay? So I just shared uh, some, some very interesting and uh, great information. And hopefully a lot of you use that to your advantage. But you want to be careful when it comes to paying on old derogatory accounts. Um, instead of trying to settle the account um, because it's only going to update to a paid uh, charge off or pay collection and at the end of the day a paid charge off or pay collection is just as bad as an unpaid charge off or unpaid uh, collection okay it's going to have the same negative impact and if it's an older account and being re-aged it's going to have a worse impact on your credit score so you want to be careful with that instead what you want to negotiate if you're able to is a payment for deletion meaning that if you pay the account instead of it being updated to a pay status they just remove it from your credit report okay um, but in this situation, I would rather you dispute it with the credit bureaus and get it removed. That way, it no longer has an impact on your credit score, whether you pay it or not. You got me? Okay. Hopefully, that's understandable. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, have received some value from this video, please like and share it. I would definitely appreciate it. I, th I think I only saw one like or, you know, one heart. What's up with that? Let me get some likes over here. Come on, please. Uh, share this with your friends. Share this with your family. But if you are someone... Um, who is looking to get their credit back on track um, and looking to you know, take your credit score to the 700 Club, we offer a credit repair service uh, where we you know, basically work on our client's behalf to help them see improvements with their credit, okay? We contact uh, credit bureaus, uh, debt collectors, and original creditors who are reporting derogatory information, and we begin to build cases for our clients to try to get them results. And as long as you don't allow any further uh, derogatory information to hit your credit report, there's no re reason, there's no reason why you should not see the average uh, result that our clients see, which is a minimum of 100 point credit score increases with each credit bureau within six months, okay? So if you are someone who is looking to take back your credit um, and looking to you know, make some moves in the future, and you know that your credit um, is an important part of the puzzle, important piece of the puzzle, excuse me, reach out to us. We would love to serve you. Um, again, my name is Jason White. I'm the CEO and founder of the company. Um, head honcho around here. Um, and basically, I educate, train uh, my staff and make sure that they are implementing the right strategies to get our clients results. And, you know, we would love to help you. But at the end of the day, make sure uh, you like this page, um, you subscribe to our channel and you stay engaged with us so that you can continue to get get and continue to get a little, a little, a little continue to get information that you won't find anywhere else. OK. Because there's a lot of janky people out here and they will try to take advantage of me. All right. Um, so basically just trying to share information to help you. Uh, what I want to do is include our website link um, in the comment area so that you can check us out. But at the end of the day, make sure you watch this video. If you missed any information, rewind it, watch it again, and do not set yourself up uh, for failure. Uh, hold up.